this week we, our country observed Canada Day. And it was a different kind of observance this week. I think for a lot of people, it maybe hit them hard that there was so much evil prevalent in our country. Because we can tend to be a little jaded and think we're the best in the land. And we are. But men and women paid a cost for that freedom to worship, but so many have been hurt in so many ways by our government, by our army, by people who call themselves by God's name. And we have to realize that these people carry incredible burdens, incredible hurt, and a lot of them associated with the name church. And so for us, to call ourselves by his name, we have to make sure that we are indeed salt and light. And that our prayers count for our country. And they must be there. No matter what you think of our rulers, we are called by God to pray for them. We are called by God to contact elected officials about bills that will so damage the fabric of our country and the people of our country. And I don't know about you, but I just get overwhelmed with how many there are that keep coming up that just blow me away as to how someone could even think of bringing this into law or expecting that it would be okay. So this morning, we are going to sing O Canada together, but we're going to just sing the last verse. And that's number 762 in your hymn books. And all of O Canada is a prayer, is a prayer that God would keep our land, this land that was established on foundations of righteousness and holiness. And that instead of focusing on what should or could be torn down what must be rebuilt. And God alone can do that, but he does it through his people. And so as Canadian citizens, it is our responsibility. And yes, I live in a little Pollyanna <coughs> world, and I don't watch a lot of news, and I don't know a lot of the atrocities that happen. They still do. Because most of our leaders are operating without Jesus as their rock, without the Holy Spirit as their guide. And that's where our prayers come in. And when we sing this, we, it's one way we stand up for our country and say, we belong to God. And we're reclaiming the ground. We're reclaiming the territory the enemy has stolen and saying, no, not on my watch. So I know you're comfy in your chairs. I know it's hard to get out. But if you can, would you stand to sing the last verse, just the last verse with us? Ruler supreme, who hearest humble prayer, O our dominion in thy loving care, help us to find, O God, in thee a lasting rich reward. As waiting for the better day, we ever stand on guard. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God. 
the birds joined in, people. The birds are joining in. My bird, it's a cardinal. I am under the rock. The rock is higher than I. Jehovah hides me right under the rock. I tell my enemies I'm under the rock. Jehovah hides me. Right under the rock I am under the rock The rock is higher than I Jehovah has me Right under the rock I tell my enemies I'm under the rock Jehovah has me Right under the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone the builders rejected Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me The earth all around me is sinking sand On Christ the solid rock I stand when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone, the village rejected. Run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <coughs> you alone are the rock, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here. You are alive, and you live in us. And we have this amazing privilege to gather outside in your glorious creation and worship you. Worship you as part of your church. We thank you and praise you that you alone are good. You alone are worthy of praise. Be in charge of everything that's said and done and open us up even more completely to worship you, to love you, to praise your holy name and to understand your truth and live by it each and every day. Amen. I will meet you in the morning Just inside the eastern gate Then be ready, faithful pilgrim Lest with you it be too late I will meet you, I will meet you, just inside the eastern gate over there. I will meet you, I will meet you, I will meet you in the morning over there. If you hasten on to glory, Linger near the eastern gate For I'm coming in the morning So you not have long to wait I will meet you I will meet you Just inside the eastern gate over there I will meet you I will meet you, I will meet you in the morning over there. That's it. Your lamps all trimmed and burning for the bridegroom watch and wait. 
She'll be with us at that meeting Just inside the eastern gate I will meet you I will meet you Just inside the eastern gate over there I will meet you I will meet you I will meet you in the morning over there Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning For the bridegroom watch and wait He'll be with us at that meeting Just inside the eastern gate I will meet you, I will meet you, just inside the eastern gate over there. I will meet you, I will meet you, I will meet you in the morning over there. Oh, the joy of that glad meeting with the saints who for us wait. What a blessed happy meeting just inside the eastern gate. I will meet you. I will meet you. Just, just, just inside the eastern gate over there. I will meet you, I will meet you, I will meet you in the morning over there. Philippians chapter 4 says this in verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. The New Living says, Let everyone see you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. For all those who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hymn number 328, please. Bye. 
of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for the mansion bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the, blood in the soul in the soul quenching blood of the Lamb? Are you gone? Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, fix your thoughts on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Proverbs 23 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. A quote from Frank Law, Outlaw says, Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. There's a song we used to sing all the time, and I think you probably know it. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Ears, here. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Hard one, mouth. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. We probably need to sing that one again, just like sometimes I dunk people twice when I'm baptizing them, just to make sure. <laughs> Do we? Sorry, couldn't resist. My Do dad, we? Yeah. I did gross too. Okay. Do we want our destiny to be true, noble, pure, right, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy? Of course we do. I don't know about you though, but my thinking sometimes needs work. My thinking, left to itself, can turn towards negativity. I can get down on myself and on others and on life in general unless I choose, unless I choose to say no, just as I must choose to rejoice, just as I must choose to stand on his word. What if we think of our minds as a garden? We want to plant good things there. Colossians 2 says, let your roots go down deep into Christ and draw up nourishment from him. So you will grow in faith, strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. We want to stay on top of the weeding, uprooting negative thoughts as they emerge above the ground. 
not letting them take root and spread. And it is amazing how you can just be almost sidelined by something from your past that you had thought you had dealt with so long ago. Out of nowhere. And you have to take it captive, take every thought captive by the work of the Holy Spirit. We must pay attention to cultivating our thought lives and nourish them with fresh water. And the weeding seems to be constantly necessary, especially in my garden and especially in my life. Now I memorize that verse this way, as a planter of praise. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, means lovable or calling forth love. Whatever is admirable, noble, true, excellent, and of good report. Think on these things, Melody. Speak these things. Watch these things. Colossians 3 tells me the why. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits at God's right hand in the place of honor and power. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Do not think only about things down here on earth. For you died when Christ died. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your real life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in his glory. As I set my mind on things above as I set my heart on things above and ask Holy Spirit to be in charge of my thoughts purposely sowing good thoughts and purposely weeding out the garbage then the God of peace will be with me it says so right in Philippians 4 verse 9 where Paul writes whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me put it into practice that's a bold statement, people. One we all should be able to say. That's our goal. Whatever you see in me, put it into practice so that the God of peace will be with you. It's not enough to learn or receive or hear or see. It must be put into practice. So let me ask you a hard question. What are you putting into practice? It's easy to read something, think about it, ponder it, enjoy it, be challenged by it, agree with it for the most part, even intend to do something about it. And all of a sudden it's already tomorrow and the process repeats itself. We can narrow in our question. Is there anything that you are actively putting into practice from our journey through Philippians so far? We've covered a lot of ground, even from just the last section we looked at two weeks ago. Christian life is life lived in union with Christ, in the power of Christ, and in hope in Christ. The world into which Christ came was a gray world, blanketed with the dark clouds of war, privation, oppression, slavery, and infanticide. Sin abounded. Sound familiar? Christianity brought a note of hope, which is the parent of joy. Joy should be the distinctive mark of someone who believes in Jesus. We should be meek and gentle, leaving judgment to God. Prayer with thanksgiving is confident prayer because it is based on God's hearing of our prayers in the past, which gives us assurance that he is indeed hearing our prayers now. His command not to be anxious about anything flows into a promise of God's peace. Not so much a thing God gives as actually God himself keeping guard over our minds and our hearts. So because I love you, I'm going to remind you of truth you already know. 
all of the learning and receiving and hearing and seeing in the world will amount to less than nothing if we do not put it into practice. James says this, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Jesus told us, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The wise man built his house on the rock. I think you all know the action. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rain. chapter 4 verse 10 I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me the Philippians were sending support to Paul in the jail in Rome indeed you were concerned but you had no opportunity to show it I am not saying this because I am in need for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. Two things to cultivate in our lives are contentment and generosity. There are many rich people on the outside who live like poor people on the inside. And there are many poor people in the world on the outside who live from an incredible place of abundance on the inside. Wealth and poverty are the external visible circumstances while scarcity and abundance are the internal invisible realities. This is what Paul is talking about. 
The kingdom of this world is a kingdom of scarcity. The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of abundance. Paul shows us what living in the kingdom of abundance looks like. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. There is only one antidote to the cancer of scarcity. Radical generosity. People of scarcity may get richer and richer on the outside and more and more impoverished on the inside. It's why Jesus said it was so hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus instructed the rich young ruler to sell everything he had and give the money to the poor and come and follow him. He knew the rich man's money had him. This is the sad and painful truth behind many rich people. They aren't rich at all. When I was in Mexico, the thing that always touched me so deeply was that no matter how little in physical materials everyone had, they were generous above and beyond. Abundance has nothing to do with how much or how little we have. In fact, I'm just going to say a word here, people. We all have too much in our houses. We all have too much. And we need to get rid of it because it actually owns us. You have to dust it. You have to take care of it. And when you pass away, I can guarantee you, nothing goes in the coffin with you or in that hole in the ground. So bless someone else with it. whatever Jesus tells you to do. Let's pray. Abba, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who is pure abundance. But he came wrapped in a cloak of poverty. Thank you for the way he shows us how to find his abundance in the most unlikely places, even in the least of these. Fill us with the generosity of the Holy Spirit that we might give as you give. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know that's one of the reasons we as a church tithe to missions. We want to be a generous church. We must be a generous church. We are called by his name. Philippians continuing on says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. We need to remember the context. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. The problem with our North American approach is the emphasis on, I can do all things. I can do all things. Because Christ will make sure it happens. Paul's emphasis decisively falls on through Christ who strengthens me. Paul summed up his life for the Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. To be crucified with Christ means the I can do all things part looks different. It doesn't mean I think I can. It means rather I know I can't. It does not mean I can accomplish anything I set my mind to as long as Jesus is helping me. It means I can persevere and endure. And not only that, but thrive and overcome every obstacle thrown in the way of the gospel because I know the secret, Christ in me. The truth, I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things he asks me to and commands me to and wants me to do and because he lives in me, because to live is Christ. I can make it through the darkest night and endure the hardest losses and suffer the gravest injustices, even to the point of losing 
my life because to die is gain. Jesus is my strength and my life and my all. He is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. He is the answer to thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Paul shows us what it looks like when a person unreservedly abandons themselves to Jesus. The outcome every single time is glory to God. I can do everything he asks because he is my all in all. You will find these words on that little sheet that you were handed out. You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I seek You are my all in all Seeking you as a precious jewel Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, let of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. We're going to take communion together to stay there, dude. And when we think about what Jesus came to show us, which was the love of the Father, and he showed it over and over and over again. And then the night, the night of his betrayal, he sat with what were supposed to be his closest group, where one of them was a traitor. And Jesus shared the last meal with them and he took the bread and said take and eat and every time you do this remember that my body is broken for you it will be broken for you and then then he took the the cup and he passed it around and he said whenever you drink of this Know that my blood is going to be completely, completely spilled out for you. For you to cleanse you and make you brand new. To give you access to the Father's love and that intimate relationship with Him that you were created to enjoy. So, to prepare our hearts, we're going to sing this song one more time. And then we're going to pray, and then we're going to take the elements together. And if you've already taken something, it doesn't matter at all. But we're going to sing this one more time, even slower. And just really think, are you my all in all? Anything that you ask me to do, I can only do because you are in 
You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Father, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this Son who showed us what perfect love looks like. Help us to live like Him. Teach us in this way of loving as He loved. We have no hope unless you lead us. So we thank you, Jesus, for that body that you broke on our behalf. And as we eat, we remember what you did with thanksgiving and praise. And we are renewed and refreshed once again. We're going to take the bread. Jesus, we truly stand in awe of your gift. No one else would have gone through that excruciating pain. All the while knowing that it was coming. Walking by, seeing other men on crosses and knowing that that was your immediate future. Feeling their pain and coming to bear incredible, unbelievable pain so that we could experience new life. Today we want to say again that we just give you everything. And really there's nothing in and of ourselves that's any good. It's only you. Only you. Thank you that you have taken our rags and clothed us in robes of righteousness. Thank you for you, Holy Spirit, that you live inside of us. And all the gifts and abilities we have been created with, all that fruit of the Spirit is growing in us and we are being transformed into the likeness of Jesus to be your ministers in a world that would be dark and despairing without your light and without your hope. May this blood, this juice 
that we drink remind us that we are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, that we are called by your name. Our names are written down. Our future is secure. And our present is much different because of your amazing, amazing grace. Thank you for the blood, Jesus. In, In Christ, Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm in the fear is drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross where Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground His body lay. Light of the world in darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, his curse has lost its grasp on me. For I am. Precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of Go standing, knowing that you are His. Go standing, fully armed people, with the belt of truth around your waist, so that you speak truth, read the truth, believe the truth, watch the truth, all truth. With the breastplate of righteousness, so that you hunger and thirst after righteousness, for His name's sake that he is your heart's desire and that those two pieces of equipment fully joined together will protect all your internal organs. With your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, always ready to give an account for the hope that is in you and always with gentleness and respect. With the helmet of salvation on your head, taking every thought captive to protect that mind that now is the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Let's use it, people. We have the shield of faith. We can walk by the same faith as the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us. And when we use it, it gets stronger and stronger, and it does indeed douse all the fiery darts of the evil one. And you have that sword of the Spirit which is sharp and double-edged, and it slices through all the lies 
of the evil one. And you do all this standing in prayer, knowing you're your father's son and daughter. Have a great week with him.